Is zone two harming your progress? Now you might have heard that zone two is the secret source to help you improve your aerobic endurance and make you a better cyclist. But if you're doing lots of zone two, is it actually harming your progress and actually preventing you from getting stronger and faster as a cyclist? So this is something that I've realized over the past six months during the winter phase. So during the winter, I was doing a lot of zone two training and not as much harder efforts on the bike. During the winter, it can be a bit harder to get out on the bike and do those harder efforts. Also, after a long summer on the bike and peaking for certain events like the Dragon Ride and Ride London, you tend to take your foot off the gas a little bit and just relax. And zone two is a really good training zone to keep your fitness up without increasing the risk of overtraining during the winter phase where you have higher risk of colds, flus and infection due to less daylight hours and also spending more time indoors. So doing zone two is a really good, efficient way of keeping yourself fit and healthy with minimum risk of injury. But at the same time, it does tend to impact overall progression in terms of your fitness levels. So you might have seen on my channel recently that I did an FTP test. And this is an FTP test, which was my first one after a peak in the summer of last year. And I just wanted to give myself an idea of where I was coming in to spring and summer and what kind of work I need to do in order to improve and progress my cycling this year. And to my surprise, even though I have been doing quite a lot of riding over the winter and maintaining quite a lot of fitness, my FTP was about 20 watts lower than my peak from last summer. And for anyone wondering what that was, that was 260 watts in the summer of last year. And I put this down to just doing too much zone two. At the same time, I've been doing lots of weight training in the gym as well and building up some more strength and endurance to minimize risk of injury by doing at least two weight sessions a week. So with that, I was doing one less cycle per week than I was leading up to my peak of 260 watts last summer. So I put it down to just doing too much zone two. And because of that, my intensity of my riding was reduced and over time, my FTP was slowly declining. And while zone two is fantastic, I really learned a big lesson that if I'm not doing a hard effort at least once a week, hard threshold session, zones four, zone five, then I'm generally going to plateau and that plateau will turn into a decline. And even though I'm keeping a good aerobic base, I'm probably not working hard enough to maintain my fitness to the levels I'm aiming for and also progressing in any way if I'm looking to improve my FTP. And this is why a lot of people do a lot of swift racing during the winter, because if you've ever done a swift race, they are really intense, really hard. So you are working in those zone four, zone five zones for a significant period of time. That's going to help you get stronger as a cyclist. So come the spring and summer, you're going to be one step ahead of your competition that I've just been doing zone two throughout the winter. And also on reflection, zone two, you might be doing a lot of low intensity zone two rather than high intensity zone two, more around zone three, for example, in your sweet spot. And that again is a lower intensity ride, more maybe a, a sort of a light recovery session as opposed to a more harder threshold session. So all these factors need to be considered when setting up your training methods throughout the year and also what you're aiming for throughout the year in terms of improving your FTP, improving your strength and endurance as a cyclist. So because of that FTP test and that realization for myself, decided that I'm going to be doing a threshold effort at least once a week. And this is replacing one of the weight sessions I was doing per week. So going from two weight sessions per week throughout the winter to now doing one session per week alongside three or four zone two efforts alongside a long weekend ride and the weekends, which will be a mixture of predominantly zone two with some efforts in there as well. And I think by doing so, my aim, as I've mentioned on the channel before, if you've not checked out the video where I've decided to call it Project 300, I'm aiming for 300 watt FTP by the end of the year. And I feel like I can be consistent by doing at least one hard threshold effort per week alongside the other rides I'm aiming to do, then gradually I will get closer to that goal. Whether I reach that goal, that's still up in the air, but if I can reach high, then if I can fall a little bit short, then I'm sure I'm going to be happy with the result. And just to keep you up to date with that project, in the last week, 
I've done six hours of riding, significantly improved my fitness over the last week based on my Strava calculations. And today I did my second threshold effort session. And in comparison to last week, where I only managed two times 10 minutes at FTP, I managed four times at FTP and actually was significantly higher than my recommended FTP. So I was actually aiming for about 240 watts each 10 minute effort and managed to hit around 250 watts. So I was well fueled before my session, just a banana and some water. And I was really well rested after an easy ride on the Saturday, a nice zone two session the day before and hitting the session really hard, really strong and feeling really good. Uh, so it's really given me some confidence to progress and improve my FTP going forward throughout the year. And if I can continue one hard threshold session per week minimum, then that will help to minimize fatigue, prevent overtraining, and give me that progression and that challenge that I need in order to improve my FTP by the end of the year. So going forward, I'm gonna be making sure that I include at least one threshold effort into my weekly training plan, and that will hopefully help me get to my goal of 300 watts by the end of the year. And if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're looking to follow along with the journey. Let me know your thoughts of what I've touched on in today's video in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next one.